Hello, and welcome to another installment of Practical Farms, where we take a look at different farms and make them more practical, depending on where we are in each phase of the game, whether it is early game, mid game, or late game, to where they are more cost effective to suit our needs. Now today we're going to be taking a look at an automatic villager wheat farm. Now a wheat farm is really fun to build, but you can't use the same design that you would use for other crop farms, where you use a hungry villager to help collect all your wheat, because the farmer will not share the wheat with the hungry villager, he converts it to bread first. And so if you want to get wheat, you have to use this design. Besides, the bread version of the farm just breaks after a few stacks of bread are produced anyways. So this one is a lot better. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how it works. So the first step in this build is to lay out a nice 9x9 nine nine square platform. And you can use any material for the base of this platform to lay your rails on. But I like to use a material that I don't normally just find naturally laying around so I can easily tell that this is meant to be for the track. So if I go and do modifications and digging around the area, I don't accidentally dig up something I shouldn't. Now, in laying out your track, you start off on the end and you need to put a block at the end so that it knows where to start and stop. This is going to be our starting point. And when you flick the lever, it turns on our powered rail. That way we have a way to stop and start the rail car if we need to override the farm. Now, you can use as many power rails as you want, but I like to conserve resources. And so what I do is every 10 blocks, I put a redstone block to power the rail. In my experience, this has been more than enough to power the rails all the way around. So let's go ahead and lay down our track, and I'll show you what it looks like. Now that we're at the end of the rail, this is where we want to collect all of our drops. And so in order to do that, we need to replace this block first with a hopper and a chest to collect your drops. Now we place your chest in this area right there, and then place a hopper pointing straight down into it. And then on top of that, you place your powered rails. Now it's important to put a powered rail above both the hopper and this block right here at the end, because it's how our unloading system is going to power the rail once it's in place. Because when the minecart gets to the end of the line, we don't want it to just drop off one item. We want it to unload everything before it heads back out to pick up more items. To put in our simple unloader, all you have to do is place blocks in this pattern. Take that one away, that one away, and that one away. This is a fairly familiar pattern that you probably will see often. Then you take your redstone comparator and you place it right there. And then you come up and you place your repeater right there and then you put a redstone torch underneath that block right there. The way this works is the comparator detects a signal from this block so it can tell if there's an item in the hopper. So if there is something in the hopper, it activates this comparator, which activates this block, which turns off the redstone torch, which is normally on, which powers this block, which powers this repeater, which powers this block, which then either turns on or off this powered rail. That way, the minecart is able to be fully unloaded before the system sends it back out to collect more items. Let's make sure we got it working properly before we move to the next part of the build. To see if it works, all you have to do is just put a minecart with hopper right there, and it should take off and make the entire circuit. As you can see, it has more than enough power to make the entire way to the end. And when it does reach the end, it just reverses course and makes its way back to the collection system. The next step is to put our farmland in one block above the track so that there's room for our hopper minecart to run through the system underneath the dirt and collect all the drops. Now it's very easy to lay down the farmland. Now I already have some that's tilled, but you could just use some dirt and then use a hoe to till the soil. But since I'm in creative, I'm going to go ahead and just place tilled farmland directly. All you have to do is just stand over one of the blocks, crouch, and place. It automatically puts it in the right height above the rail car track. Then come through and just fill in farmland over every single block of the platform and you're good to go. Now when you get to the center square you're going to want to put a half slab 
in order to waterlog it and hydrate the farmland. Now you can see I'm already starting to have some of the farmland turn back to dirt because there's not a water source. So the sooner you can do that, the better. Once the farmland is in place, all you have to do is start planting your seeds so that it has time to start growing as you finish off the rest of the build. The next step, once the seeds are all planted, is to put a wall around this build. That way, once we put our villager in place, he won't be able to escape. Now, you can use any building block you want for that. I want to use smooth stone because it just makes it easier for this tutorial to see all the different blocks. Now at this level you can use any block you like, but I like to use glass blocks. It makes it where you can see into the farm and see what's going on in case your farmer is having some difficulty. It helps just in troubleshooting your farm later. And that's it. It's now ready to put your farmer in, and he's good to go. So let's go ahead and place our villager, maybe add in a few extra light sources, and get this farm working. Now probably the most difficult part of this entire build is to bring a villager into this farm and you can use whatever method you like to use. You can use rail cars, you can use boats, you can use water streams, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and since I'm in creative I'm going to go ahead and spawn this in with the spawn egg. Now you need him to be a farmer and you can either lock his trade in before he shows up or you can do it right here by placing a composter and letting him link to that and placing a light source above it. Now he won't link to this station until he believes he's in a village. In order to make him believe he's in a village, you need to have a bed nearby for him to link up to. So I'm just going to go here and temporarily place one. I have one in my inventory. And I'll just place it right here so that he can see it and link up to it and create a new village. Once he's done that, he will take the composter as his workstation and make it his profession. And there we go. Now, if you want to remove the bed and the and the composter at this point, that's perfectly fine. You just need to make sure you lock in his trade. So let's see what he has available. So I need to grab some carrots real quick or some, or some emeralds. Let me grab an emerald so I can trade and lock in his trade. And he's now a farmer forever. Like I said, at this point you can just remove this and even the bed and he will never change from being a farmer. Now all that's left is to put our rail car in place and wait for him to do his job. I'll come back once he starts collecting wheat for our rail car to pick up. Alright, so the wheat is all finely grown and ready to be harvested. And you'll notice though that none of the wheat has been collected by our farmer. Now if you watched our easy automatic crop farm tutorial, you'll know that the reason this is is because the farmer will not collect any of the harvest until there's something for him to replant. So what we need to do is give him some seeds and then he'll just go ahead and start harvesting this wheat and replanting it. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. We can take these seeds, throw it to him, and he'll start harvesting. Now he won't start dropping wheat until his inventory is full. So I like to just go ahead and kind of give him a head start by throwing him extra wheat so that he's ready to have a full inventory as soon as possible. You don't have to do this, but it is going to make the farm begin being productive a lot sooner. But if you don't mind waiting, you can just wait until he's collected the entire harvest two or three times and it will work just fine. So now it's just a matter of time before he's collected enough and replanted it all to fill up his inventory so he starts dropping wheat for a hopper minecart to pick up. As you can see, as he's collecting, a lot of the wheat is getting left behind. This means his inventory is full and all the wheat he collects from here on out is just going to stay on the ground until the hopper minecart comes by to pick it up. So let's go ahead and see how it's doing. There you go. It's already collected quite a bit of wheat. He's only had to collect the crops twice and it's already starting to reduce. It's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. And it does all the work for you. I love automatic villager crop farms. Now there's a couple things, tips I'd like to point out to make sure that you don't have any problems with this farm. First off, make sure that you don't put any partial wall blocks on the sides or planes of glass. If you do, there's a chance that the wheat will just kind of sit near the edge and never get picked up. Second, 
Make sure you put plenty of light sources around this farm, in addition to the one over the center, just to make sure that mobs don't spawn and also that the crops have plenty of light to grow even during the night. Now the farmer won't pick it up at night as they only work during certain hours of the day, but when he does start working in the morning, it'll be there for him to harvest. Now I'd like to share a couple troubleshooting tips with you in case your wheat farm isn't working. The first is if you notice your farmer is running around crazy like he's scared or panicking, chances are he thinks he's supposed to be in another village. The solution for this is easy, just like other villager-based farms, is to place a bed near the village so that he can see it and it tells him he is in a new village and he doesn't have to be scared. Villagers don't like being outside of villages for very long, so that's just a simple solution. Once he's linked up to that bed, you can remove it again, and it should be fine. Another problem you might find is if your crops are fully grown, but the farmer is just sitting around not doing anything, usually in a corner or in some other area near the wall, it may be that he's gotten confused. So all you have to do is go down into your farm, give him a little nudge, and he will start working again. For some reason, villagers get confused about partial blocks, and tilled land is considered a partial block, and so he might not path fine to the right spot sometimes. All you have to do is just give him a nudge and he will start working again. Now as far as upgrading this farm to be more powerful, really the only option you have is to tile it out side by side. You could have linked them all up with one rail car, but to be honest, if they cross a chunk border when you're loading or unloading, it could very easily break your farm. Always, always, always chunk align your farms and make sure that the, if they do cross a chunk border, the redstone is turned off when you load or unload the chunk. Otherwise, you will lose your minecart eventually. If you don't mind risking it, then it's fine. Build it wherever you want. But I recommend chunk aligning. That being said, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful to you, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it's going to help you out in your world. And if you do use this farm, if you don't mind leaving a comment down below, letting us know how it worked out for you, I'd greatly appreciate it. But with that, I hope to see you again next time. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye!